uh, share with you my, uh, my ideas for teaching the writing process. Um, and I came up with this when I was teaching some full pre Fulbright scholars in Nepal, and they liked it. And then I used it again with um, some manage, uh, middle, middle and upper managers at a Nepali um, hydroelectric power company. And it stuck with them. And I thought, OK, well, maybe this actually works. So um, in about a 50-minute class, I can uh, teach, um, teach the writing practice using a pretty simple acronym and a visual drawing, drawing that students can remember. Um, and the first thing I do is I ask the students if they know what an acronym is. And so I'm asking you, do you know what an acronym is? And can you give me an example? Yes. It's a word made out of initials such as NATO or North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Excellent. Yes. And you know, most of the students will come up with um, AIDS. Uh, they don't exactly know what it means, but they've heard that enough. Um, I share with them whatever my latest favorite uh, acronyms are right now. I think it was the Soul Chapter that put this on one of their um, emails, and I really liked it. And I've been using it in my class because it makes, I, I, to me, it gives them a reason to do their pair work. Team, together, everyone achieves more. And then most people don't know that the word laser <coughs> is actually an acronym. It means light amplification by emission of radiation. Uh, I learned that when I worked at the Texas Medical Center. And, um, and finally, where, where is S from? Emission. Oh. Huh. Light amplification. I can't remember. I must have written it down wrong. <laughs> anyway, um, well, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you should um, make it homework for her. Yeah. <laughs> Acronyms, wait, why am I talking? And then um, there's one more acronym, and this is the one that I use to teach the right process. And at this point, I pick up my stimulated emission. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Wait, let's go back. Oops. There you go. Light amplification by stimulated emission. There we go. All right, so um, at this point, in the, after I ask them about what is an acronym, I'll pick up my trusty marker, and I will remind students that I have a master's degree in art history, which means I cannot draw. Um, and I draw a little man. And he's smiling. Uh, he's waving at you. And uh, if I was very good at PowerPoint and I had paid attention to uh, Cody Turneau, who spoke at the last Guangdong uh, Cotiso uh, meeting, I would know how to do this, but I don't. So here's my little man. Pretty bad here. Uh, and he's waving. And I tell the students that his name is Fred. And Fred is a common name in Western language. And then I say, well, Fred's actually not waving. Fred has a big bat in his hand. Here. Big bat in his hand. And he's bopping himself on the head. And I ask my students, do you know what the word bop means? Do you know what the word bop means? What is bop, yes. Well, that's hip hop with good pat, yeah. But what, oh, bebop. 
goes very fast. And so a brainstorm is when your brain is thinking very fast and you write those ideas down very quickly. Um, and I suggest a topic. And the topic that I always use is party. Because whether you are teaching in Nepal, Korea, or the United States, whether they are young students, teenagers or university students or business uh, professionals, they all know what a party is, so they can wrap their heads around this topic. So um, I will ask them to brainstorm about party. And what, what do you think of when you hear the topic party? What do you think? Anybody? Socialize. Socialize. Ooh. Yeah, okay, this one. Music. Sorry? Music. Music. Music, socialize. All right, the topic is party. What are you going to tell people about the party? Having a good time. Good time. Anything else? Invitation. Yeah, this is an important one. You need an invitation to go to the party. What do you need to know about the party? Please, whose party is it? Who? So the people, what else? Dress code? Yeah, dress. The theme. The theme. Place. The place. BYOB. <laughs> the drink. Food and beverages. Yeah, and food, so important food. So you get this list going, and it's easy for them to come up with ideas for a party. Yeah. So I spend one or two minutes putting the brainstorm on the board, and then I move to organize. Mm -hmm. And the way I get them to organize it is I tell them to put it into their WH questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Uh, and so, you know, the who, you know, that would be the guests, the friends, the colleagues, the what, party, dress, music, food, should have put food up there. Um, another what, my God, what happened at the party. Um, when, the date, the time. The place is the why and uh, the where and how. So I didn't put the how up there. Um, how are you going to get there by car, by boat? <laughs> yeah. um, if somebody said that, I'd, put, I'd definitely put it on the brainstorm. Um, and the why. You know, is it a birthday party? Is it a going away party? Um, the theme. Okay. So that gets them thinking about the organization of the topic, the party. 
So we've done the brainstorm, we've done the organization, and at this point, I usually take a, a side step from Bob Fred, and I make sure they know what a paragraph is, because I, I'm continually amazed um, how often my students don't know what a paragraph is. So I will elicit the definition of a paragraph. And so what do you say a paragraph is? When you ask your students, what do you, what's a paragraph? One idea. One idea? It's a group of related sentences on a topic that's unified and coherent. Okay. You definitely teach upper level students, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so um, I, I, I also, oh yes, Pat. Is, is that the way spelling? Elicit, L I. Uh, L -L yeah, it's elicit. -E it should be an E. And, you know, uh, yeah, not I. I yeah. Um, illicit. Thank you. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I'm mentioning is eighty, maybe about eighty to hundred words, depending on the level. Oh, okay. Just to give them an idea. All right. So one of my other favorite acronyms uh, for me and my students is KISS. I'm always telling them, KISS me. Keep it short and simple. And so my definition for paragraph is it's three or more sentences about one idea. Huh? Um, and then I will give them examples of two paragraphs. And they have to tell me which one, A or B, is the paragraph. So A, Professor Kelly is a teacher of English to students of other languages. She has been teaching ESOL since 2006. Um, uh, Ms. Kelly has taught in both Nepal and Korea, <coughs> and she is active in professional uh, development organizations. That's example A. Example B, uh, Professor Kelly is a teacher of English to students of other languages. Her friend is Liz. Liz teaches English education. Liz and Emily like English Central. Uh, Emily is secretary of Gondwan Kotisal. Andy is vice president and Ms. Kelly is the president of the chapter. So which one is a paragraph, A or B? A. A. Yes. Yeah, so it's A because it's three or more sentences about one topic. Okay. Um, and then I will go back to the board and I will show them what a paragraph looks like. Uh, well, actually, I think I have a slide. Yeah. I show what a paragraph looks like because this is the other thing that um, at least my students don't seem to quite understand. And I sometimes wonder if it's because they are not reading as much as perhaps I would like them. So they don't see paragraphs that much anymore. So the first one is a paragraph. It may or may not be indented. It continues along. It doesn't stop. This is not a paragraph. A list is not a paragraph. And so I, being a kinetic and visual person, I show that to them so that they'll understand it. Now in the classroom, I just take my pen and I go like this, da 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 full stop, da 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 question mark, da 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 and show them that that is the paragraph. It is not one sentence, two sentence, three sentence. This way, when they send me homework via email, when I've asked them to write me a paragraph, and they just list it, again, I can give them feedback. No, remember, the paragraph is not a list. So I teach them a little sidestep on the paragraph. So we've done the brainstorm. We've talked about the organization. And now we're going to go and talk about the plan. T 
teach the students what do all writings have. They have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It doesn't matter if you're talking about just a paragraph. A paragraph should have a beginning, a middle, or an end, or a report, or an article. They should all have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And when they are doing their planning, they need to think in terms of beginning, middle, and end. So at this point, I get them to go back and look at the organization and elicit, with an E, the plan. So I ask them to think for the beginning. What goes first? What in this list of the organization might go into the first, into the beginning, second in the beginning, third in the beginning. What would be in the middle? And what would go first in the middle, second in the middle, third in the middle? And what would go at the end, first, second, and third? And I ask them to assign numbers, one, two, three, four. And hopefully when they get to the numbers, we end up with something that looks sort of like this. We have an introduction, and we put the occasion or the event, the invitation, as Mije said. We give some of the details, the time, the date, the place. Those are things that would be in the beginning of the report. So that's the introduction. The middle is the details. Well, what details do you want to talk about first? What details do you want to talk about second, third? Look back at your organization and choose from those who, what, when, where, why's, what you want to go as the details. Usually it's the guests, the friends, the colleagues, the dress, the music, the food, and maybe the Oh my God, what happened at the party? And then the conclusion. With most of my students, I will lead into the first draft by guiding them on the verb tense, especially with a lower level class. And I'll ask them, is, are, are we making an announcement about the party? Or are we reporting on the party? If they're a lower level class, I'm going to suggest that they report on the party because it's going to be in the past tense, which is easier for them to, um, to write. Um, if it's a little more advanced class, I'll tell them, OK, if you're going to announce it, your verb tenses are going to change. You need to at least think about this when you're writing your sentences. You may have present continuous sentence. You may have sentences uh, in the present simple with be going to plus the infinitive. So I get them to at least start thinking about these things. organizing it into the WH categories, to then planning it out, taking those WH um, topics and putting them in the beginning, the middle, and the end, very logically. And now I'm going to get them to start writing their first draft. And um, I usually give them five or eight minutes. I put them in groups of four or five, and I tell each of them to write one of the paragraphs that we've mapped out. I tell, I, you know, I go around and help them, I circulate and help them, and I tell them, don't worry about the grammar, just write some sentences as best as you can. So, I'm thinking one, two, three, four, five, I, I have like five sheets or six sheets, and I thought I would give everybody 
um, every group a sheet of paper. And if you could, yeah, so year one, you talk about the party, the event. It doesn't matter. Just make it up. You guys can be to the time, date, and the place. So you're going to write a couple of sentences about each category. So you would be guests, friends, colleagues, who are you going to invite to the party? All right. You guys, um, dress, <coughs> music, music. <laughs> Um, 
or opinion? I try to teach note taking from the beginning of a, of a semester. So when I write things on the board, I will tell them to pick, pick out the notes. So by the time I've got to Bob Fred, they kind of know what a note is. And if they don't, it's OK. All right? They'll get it in the end. It's not a one-time thing. It's something that they have to practice more than once. So, but I get them to read their sentences, or I read them for them, and prepare them for the revision part. So, who's one? Okay. Well, the party will be to celebrate Fred graduating university with a BS in medieval plumbing. <laughs> the theme will center around a medieval banquet with period costumes <coughs> and Fred sitting on a throne. Everyone should bring a bottle. <laughs> Two? I, in memory of our ancestors on June 6th, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. at Christina's crib. Good. I'd like to invite only men who are younger than Harry Okay. No formal dress code, anything is appropriate within reason. Next. <laughs> Uh, we'd like to invite you to our uh, St. Patrick's Day party with traditional Irish music. Okay. Uh, there was lots of dancing and drinking. Boom! The Joker arrives. Sometimes I won't let it go in order, and I'll make them think, all right, was the organization correct? Did we, was it clear that first, that the beginning was in, was the invitation, who was coming, the date and time, the middle was the detail, the end was what happened at the party, and everybody had a good time. So I'll make them try and think about the organization of it. Um, which takes us to the revise. So they've done the brainstorm, they've done the organization, they've done the planning, and they've done a first draft, okay? And now I get them to do the revise, and I tell them still, don't worry about the grammar. And the reason is, if you check the grammar now, and you revise it, and you go in and you move things, or you add things, or you take <coughs> things away, then when you go and do your final grammar check, you often miss mistakes. So I tell them, don't worry about the grammar yet. We're just worrying about the plan. And what revise means is, did you stick to the plan? Is the beginning the beginning, the middle the middle, and the end the end? Um, is your first draft clear and comprehensible? Um, a lot of times when I have it on one, one sheet, I will give some peer, you know, let them swap and say, is it clear? Is it understandable? <coughs> if the students are telling me, no, it's not quite clear, I don't get it, I, you know, I ask them, well, did you leave points out? Go back to your organization and go back to your plan. Is everything checked off? Um, did you add sentences or paragraphs that are not in the plan? If you do, go back to your Bob. See what's there, what's not there. Take out what's not on your plan. Um, does the storyline flow logically? If not, Go back to the organized. Make sure you've got it organized. Did you stick to the plan? <coughs> um, if they have stuck to the plan, they should be a, they should have a nice short report on the party. Now, by the time you get to this revise, it's usually about the end of your 50-minute class because, of course, you're going to be going slower with these students eliciting things from them. 
um, their writing of the first draft. Um, so this will be my time for a classroom wrap-up, and I will review what the acronym means. What does Bob Fred mean? Brainstorm. Brainstorm. Organize. Plan. First draft. Revise. Yes. Final yes. document. Yes. And I'll go back to, you know, Fred, don't forget Fred. Fred's bopping himself on the head. If you can remember that Fred bops himself on the head, you can know the writing process. Um, but I tell them for this assignment, for the party, they've only done the first part. All they've done is bop and the first draft. And they still need the red. Um, I usually give the revise as a homework task. Um, they can either revise their own paragraphs or you can switch papers and they can do a peer review. Um, the next step is the edit. Um, and this can also be given as a homework task or I have an alternative to show you in a minute. Um, so you've done brainstorm, organized plan, the first draft, you've revised, you have stuck to the plan, now you need to do the editing. And this is the uh, grammar part. Um, remind your students they need to check the subject verb agreement, their verb tenses, check their capitalization, punctuation, their spelling. Um, plurals and articles is always a challenge in Asia because they don't use them here. Um, and um, you know, if you provide them with a rubric, whether it's just a list, something like this, it's helpful to them. <coughs> so it's the end of your class, and of course we're all good teachers, so we are going to ask them if they understood the Q and uh, the Bob Fred idea, if they have any questions, do they, you know, um, do they have problems with the difference between organizing and planning? Um, so we'll, we'll do a little Q&A. Um, and then I told you I had an alternative for homework. Um, I've also tried gathering um, their sheets and collating it together and giving it to the students at the next class where they can then do it as a class, the, the revision, the editing as a class project depending upon your level and how much time you have with your students, both seem to work. Um, this is a little more um, work for you as a teacher, but I, sometimes I like it. Let's switch it up. Yeah. So the last step um, is the document. So they've done their brainstorm, organized, they've planned it, they've written their first draft. They've revised it, they've edited. Really, there's nothing else but to polish it into a final document, whether they're retyping it or rewriting it, putting it on a nice piece of paper, sending it to you as a proper <coughs> email. The work's already done. Congratulations, writers. You have now bopped to Fred. And, um, and that's it. They have bopped Fred. A um, couple of notes on on Bob Fred that that I've experienced. I think it works because um, it's sort of a funny acronym, so they tend to remember it, um, and they remember my silly bad drawing of Fred. And um, I've given them a quiz the next week and I've said what is the writing process and virtually all of them will draw a stick figure and they may not quite have all of the words correct but they're close. They've got the idea of this writing process now. Um, I've used Spot Fred with uh, university students, um, English for academic purpose students, ESP students, government management professionals, um, preparatory, college preparatory students. It seems to work with um, teens and above. I'm not a young learners teacher, so I, 
I can't attest to whether or not it would work with young kids. Um, and the neat thing about Bot Fred is it doesn't matter what their language, their first language is. It's an acronym that transfers because the writing process is the same in all languages. You just have to remember what the writing process is. Um, so whether you're, you know, teaching them in your native tongue or a foreign tongue, it seems to apply. Um, the bad, um, it's false beginners and more advanced learners resist doing Bob Fred. Uh, they think they already know how to write. And what happens is you get these reports and they're their paragraphs are all jumbled. You can't see a consistency. There's no flow from the first to the middle to the end. And it's because they have not organized it and planned it out. Um, but, you know, it's hard to change old habits. So false beginners and more advanced are a little challenging. I remember I was um, uh, giving private lessons to um, a minister in Nepal and he would write these letters and they were terrible and he would not talk Fred and I finally said you know this isn't going to work unless you try and change and slowly he started understanding that it saved him time the other thing is with students who are studying for um, like an IELTS or TOEFL and they have to do a writing assignment in a certain amount of time. They're hesitant to do Bob Fred because they think it takes more time. But you have to assure them that if they take the time to do the brainstorm, the organized plan, that when they go to write it, it will be quicker for them and they'll get a higher score. Um, revise is the most difficult task. Um, it's one that's often overlooked. Uh, I encourage you to not let your students overlook that. <coughs> Make sure they think about, did you stick to the plan? Sometimes the plan needs to be revised in and of itself. But make sure they're going back to the organization and back to the plan and back to the brainstorm. <coughs> Have they included it all? And make sure they do that before they do the grammar check. Um, as, your, as your students develop, as their writing develops, um, they will find that <coughs> they start with the brainstorm, the organize the plan, they do the first draft, and then they're going back and back, and it gets more complicated, and there's the second draft and the third draft, and it's not a linear process. But when you teach it, when you teach the writing process for the first time, if you can get them to stick with the Bob Fred, even if it's just for a couple of um, uh, uh, reports, a couple of exercises, they'll get the idea. And I mean, think about yourself when you're writing. You don't need to write down your brainstorm. You already have it here. You don't need to write down your organization, but it's actually the steps that you go through. And that's all I have. Any questions? Yes, Pat. Uh, I really like that a lot. Uh, you know, I find, I don't know what other teachers, but you know, on the paragraphs, you know, you hammer that basic thing of indenting the first line and flush lefting the other ones, I don't know why they're not learning. They're, 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 you know, they're resentful at learning English. They're angry at me or something. You know, it's so basic. I don't know why they, they just seem to ignore that, even though you hammer it again and again. Uh, I, and it's not just um, the English, um, because Korean Hangul is written in paragraphs. You know, you read a, you look at, a, I look, I can't read. A Korean newspaper, it's in paragraphs. Um, for me, I think it's they're not reading as much as they should, so they don't see it. 
sentences, controlling yeah. ideas or anything like that. I mean, you don't really have a paragraph of that. Um, so, usually the topic is given to the students, yeah. right? Um, and I just make sure they, you know, stick to the topic. I just guide them that way. Yeah, I try not to let them deviate. And <coughs> let them understand intrinsically that each paragraph has to be about one thing and the whole thing has to flow. I, I use an example of a ribbon and the ribbon starts at the top and it flows all the way through 
And so if a more, with a more complicated, a longer report, I often say one sentence leads to the next sentence. So whatever is in this, the first sentence, has to be incorporated to some extent in the second and the third and the fourth. Um, what do you do? I struggle with sit down and talk about the topic and controlling idea for I use a summary. I use a, um, this is a, a, this is a giraffe, okay? It's the first topic sentence or something about a giraffe. And then the next sentence is, uh, he ha it has a long neck. Um, it is these colors. It lives in Africa. And so they understand that like, giving them a simple sentence in the beginning, all the other sentences that follow it have to be about that first sentence. And so because it's so basic, they, it, it connects for them. And it helps them understand the, the idea of the topic sentence. Okay, hold on, Sam. I think you, in this example that we just wrote, about about heart state, and pretty much gave us the topic, and we wrote like that was the topic sentence. Right. So the next step I would do with students would be maybe think of a, a title for this paragraph, and then they would say, "Oh, this is the party or something." And because at this level, it kind of makes sense that whatever title we have for this paragraph becomes the topic sentence. I teach students also that there's a beginning, middle, and end with both paragraphs and essays, but I do in fact tell them about topic sentence, body sentences with supporting details for the topic sentence, and then concluding sentence, and then shall cohere together. Um, the topic I use is three qualities in a good student, we brainstorm qualities in a good student, and the topic sentence says three qualities in a good student are A, B, and C, and then the first two or three sentences of the body are about quality A, transition, second few sentences are about quality B, third are about quality C, then a concluding sentence, and that teaches them a basic paragraph structure with a simple topic that gets them to think, and that can be expanded into an essay on the subject with an introductory paragraph thesis and body paragraph one on the first quality in a good student, body paragraph two on the second quality of good student, body paragraph three, including paragraph, I, I, I've done that in China, yeah. Taiwan, yeah. so I found that works. I give them transitions for the paragraphs, and I say, you can use these, get a book, go to the internet, they're there, memorize them, if you want to score high on the test, you've got to take them <coughs> by the hand through the article, just like taking a child across the street, you hold their hand for clarity, for the ribbon, like you said, yeah. I write on the board like that too, just like you do, exactly, and they still yeah. don't do it. I said, show me that you mastered this structure. Show me this, follow directions. Yeah. You know, and it's not something they're gonna learn. If they learn it in a semester, you've done a great job. All right, we've got two more, and then I've got a lady showing me a sign. BJ, as president, you're next. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, because the Korean SAT uh, is is going to be placed by the needs, uh, so needs uh, includes uh, writing, and I think uh, writing will be more focused in public education as well as private institution. The thing is, writing convention is very new to us. For example, in Korean writing, we do not, I think never use colon or semicolon. But in English book, especially in the professional <coughs> book, you use colon and uh, semicolon, yeah. uh, all this detailed uh, stuff. Uh, when I go back to the you know 200 years of Korean writing, we don't need to write punctuation and comma. We do not use it yeah. as a matter of fact. So we don't need it, and then this is just a new You're thing. You're learning. Yeah, yeah, it's new. And then especially for this uh, English style writing, yeah. the format itself is new since it is not taught in Korean uh, school system because of me uh, <coughs> writing introduced. It'll be, it be very good. It'll be much better. It's sure. pretty good. Sure. One more comment. Uh, I want to share uh, some some Korean students' um, like situation. Mm -hmm. uh, the similar story, uh, the Korean kids were taught, mm -hmm. are taught now mm -hmm. in the third grader in elementary school. Mm -hmm. 
like the like the yeah. magic main main idea <coughs> of the sentence blah 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 because I I taught my son yeah and uh, they talk okay yes. and then yes and then they knew how to what what is a good writing but they they didn't practice yeah and it did not homework it just did they read and a part of the test and second is when I teach the reading the company uh, reading book. Uh, there is a almost a reading book has a finding the topic sentence. Yeah. And then uh, I wish uh, there is no multiple choice to find the topic sentence. Maybe students should find the topic yeah. sentence. It could be struggling well, to find the main idea. Yeah. I checked the the like a uh, writer. Uh -huh. It could be Korean, and it could be uh, they, they are uh, native speaker too. Yeah. So when I got an idea like a feel like that. Um, most of the reading book shouldn't give the yeah. like a sample of the topic I read. You should sample. tell the publishers that. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are over time. Uh, I want to thank Cotisal National Council, Cotisal Don One Chapter, yeah, 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 and Mayo Guan Don. Thank you very much.